So first, I'd like to bring on Brian Cena. Brian, hello there. Hey, Amber. Hi, Brian. Hey. All right, so Brian, you got reelected to your third term. Yes, I did. I didn't have an opponent, so myself and my district mate, Selena Colburn, uh, we both just won our primary and our general election race without any opposition, which was actually a relief considering um, how difficult campaigning was during this year with the pandemic. So, so the first year you ran uh, two cycles ago, did you have an opponent then? We did. We had a, a, a primary opponent in the Democratic primary, but then we had no Republican opponent or independent or anyone in the general. So, you know, so that, you know, you're moving up there in seniority. Um, what can you do with that? Well, I think the longer, um, you know, you do any particular job, the more relationships you build in that position and the more you understand how the job works. And so uh, going into my third term, I have a lot of relationships as well as a lot of connections in the community. Instead of campaigning, I spent a lot of time organizing with other black, indigenous and people of color. Uh, around racial justice issues over the summer. And so I'm excited to go in um, working with the you know the racial justice movement in Vermont to keep pushing. Um, also, um, you know, working with the Democratic Socialists, um, you know, in the recovery from this pandemic, we have an opportunity to address the inequities in our society and our economy. And so hopefully we'll be pushing on the state and federal level for solutions, economic solutions to the problems of the pandemic that actually transform our economy and don't just go back to the way it was, which clearly wasn't working and was and fell apart pretty fast so so what committees would you like to be a part of uh, i've been on the health care committee for four years and uh i don't know if i'll be put back on the health care committee because i have seniority now they might move me somewhere else um so i've been thinking about what other positions i might ask for but honestly i'm not there yet i'm still kind of digesting the results of the election and really focused on working with people um, on issues in a broader sense, not thinking about it from the committee lens yet. Well, how good, Brian. Congratulations. My goodness. You know, you first ran for school board in Burlington and then decided to run for the House. And that's so cool. So you've been uh, elected three times now. Congratulations. Thank so uh, let's let's bring on John Kalaki now. John Kalaki just got elected to his second term um, as a state representative from South Burlington. Hi, John. Hello, Amber. Hello, Brian. Nice to see you all. So, Brian, you ran unopposed. Yes. I, so I did, I did as well. Yes, Brian did, and I did. Oh, John, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so, John, um, you've got two years under your belt at the State House. What do you see happening in your second term? Well, you know, it's been lovely to work alongside Brian. I've learned a great deal from him, and he's really led the House to really understand uh, issues uh, – with our indigenous people, the Abenaki. Uh, and he and I worked on some of those issues. We were working on a uh, eugenics apology that still needs work. Um, and so I'm hoping that we can move that forward. You know, that, that's a lot of coalition building there. Would um, you go back and talk about the eugenic apology? What, what What's the history of that? Well, in the 1930s, Vermont had a really ugly history that is not really well known, that they targeted um, the Abenaki people, they targeted uh, people with disabilities, French Canadians, mixed race people, people of color, and it was truly the, the white nationalism. It was like the white race. And they institutionalized people, they broke families up, it took children out of people's homes, they burned people's homes down. And so with our, our Abenaki tribes, the Literally, the people disappeared. They had to be integrated into society to survive. And so, you know, three generations later, it's been very, the societies are so fragmented. And it's it's something new. Um, in recent years, I mean, I think it was 2004 that the, the governor of Vermont said, well, there are no Abenaki people here. I was like, huh? What are you talking about? And so there's there's a real reckoning uh, in Vermont uh, that is is happening. And I would say that Brian has been the leader in the state house on these issues. And oh, really how helped. exciting! Yeah. So so John, um, with you have a little bit of seniority now. So um, is there any changes you'd like to make in your committee assignments? Well, I've been really enjoyed working on, on housing, affordable housing issues, and recovery housing issues that I uh, have been 
learning a lot about and doing advocacy around. So I'm hoping to stay in, in housing. Well, very nice. That, that's nice that you found something you like and you're co you're committed to it. That is so that is super. All right. So now let's bring on Taylor Small, who um, just got elected to her first term as a state uh, representative and is the first tra transgendered person to be elected to the state uh, house of Vermont. So congratulations, Taylor. Well, thank you so much, Amber, for having me. Oh, my goodness. How exciting that must be. Oh my goodness, it is exciting, especially knowing not only that this is a great, a great movement here in Vermont, but knowing that this is also happening on a national level. And gotta give a shout out to Sarah McBride, who is now holding the highest office that a trans person in the U.S. is holding um, as state senator over in Delaware. How how cool is that? So um, the three of you, I believe you all identify as members of the GLBTQA uh, community. Um, how many of the community are um, in the state house right now? Well, we we're doubled gonna, this year. Yeah, we lost Deanna Gonzalez, but we gained six new people. So we're going to be a 10 person caucus in the House of Representatives. Probably the most in Vermont history of openly queer or LGBTQIA plus whatever, you know, people. So is there an actual caucus? I mean, we meet with outright, you know, when they come and we talk with the youth, um, we don't meet regularly, but perhaps with 10 of us, we should. Uh, what's the percentage? You know, how many people are in the house? Oh, you're testing us, Amber. It's 10 out of 150. <laughs> well, <laughs> not even one, uh, but that, that has to be one of the highest percentages in the country. But Amber, we also have Becca Ball in the Senate, who's going to be the president pro tem, okay? Mm -hmm. And she's she's a lesbian. So it is pretty extraordinary that Becca Ballant, Senator Ballant, is going to be the president of our Senate. Oh, mm -hmm. how I didn't realize that. That is very cool. Now, the Speaker of the House um, is in a recount and may not return to the House. So... Are you guys going to be involved in any of that? What's going to happen? Well, uh, there will be, uh, there's a lobbying already, of course, for people are showing their interest, uh, both people who are elected and people who did not get elected, because you don't actually have, you can be the Speaker of the House without being a House member. Amber, run Amber, Amber the <laughs> I'll put my shoes on. <laughs> well, how? But that's that's going to be interesting, isn't it? It's going to shake things up, Amber, because for four years, you know, we we got into this groove of working with the speaker and a certain leadership team, and if if she doesn't come back, it really shakes up the the group dynamic, and if especially if we're doing, we're trying to bond with all these new legislators on Zoom with a new speaker. It really is, it's going to be hard to predict how that's going to turn out. And, you know, we could get a speaker who is in, is in the same sort of like mindset as the current one, or we could get a speaker who wants to take us in a different direction. So really, it's really, um, it's really throwing sort of everything up in the air. Wow. Um, so uh, I believe her name, Mitzi, was that, is that her name? So were you in favor? Would you hopefully that she could, she could come back, correct? Even well, if she wasn't reelected. This is my first term, and I adored her because she was a consensus builder. As a new legislator, she listened to me. She, she let me give my opinions on things, um, and I felt heard. Uh, I think she has said if, if the recount, she's, I think, behind 20 votes. If that does not go her way, she's not going to return. She's yeah. not going to run for speaker. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's, that's and, too and bad. That's right, because the speaker determines what's actually going to hit the floor of the House. Yeah. And for four years, you know, I, I feel like after four years of getting to know the speaker, I felt like um, we developed a good relationship and she she listened to me and included me in things. And I felt like we had a lot of respect. And so um, I really am sad that she's not going to be with us. Well, we don't know that yet, but I'm sad that she lost the election. And I hope the recount turns things around. And, you know, on another note, the progressive leader also lost his seat of the progressive caucus, Robin Chestnut Tangerman. So we're not only losing the speaker who was the leader of the Democrats, but we're losing the progressive leader. So that does shake things up for us. 
and it must make it, you mentioned earlier, you know, meeting on Zoom, that really must make it more difficult because you can't read body language. Mm -hmm. You don't get to know them. You don't get to have those quiet little conversations mm -hmm. in the corner. You know, that you guys it really got your work cut out for you. But Amber, sometimes people forget to turn off their camera if they're leaving. <laughs> and one time one of the legislators stood up. He's a barber. And he went and gave someone a haircut. And we all watched him <laughs> during the house giving a haircut. He's like, turn your camera off, dude. Please, please, turn your camera off. It's, it's, it's a working legislature. <laughs> so, it's, it's, um, so you had its challenges. So, Taylor, um, you've gotten a lot of national and international news because of your, your uh, accomplishment. Tell, tell me about how that's been. Um, it has been wild. Uh, when I entered into this race, I knew that it would have significance here in the state of Vermont and nationally, but I did not quite understand that this would be international news. And I think what has been really resounding from folks uh, is the fact that across the globe, people were watching our election, especially our presidential election and the moves that we were going in. So to have my race called so early and to have this, this bright spot or this bright light to look forward to was uh, hopeful and helpful for folks who have reached out and was kind of that, that hold of, of hope when, uh, when we were waiting for our election results. And thank goodness, I want you to know, I was preparing that I was not going to figure out the election results until the end of the week. Um, so to have that happen this weekend, it was literally, I was on a call just an hour beforehand, like, okay, preparing to wait. And then the news came. So uh, of course, a huge congratulations to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So, um who has reached out to you? Have anybody of note reached out to you, Taylor? Um, a few people of note. Of course, Danica Rome reached back out again. So she was our nation's first out trans legislator. Uh, I did have a fangirl moment for those who watch Pose. India Moore reached out. Um, and I think people were actually more excited about the fact that Demi Lovato mentioned me in her Instagram story uh, rather than the fact that I won an election. So, um, <laughs> oh, and I guess Sharon Stone tweeted about me. So that is also pretty notable. Well, how cool that, you know, what what does it say about Vermont where we have 10 um, out uh, legislatures in the House and you guys are going to do some great things. And I just want to applaud you for running and for serving. And I look forward to hearing the great things you're going to do. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you. Hey, thank Amber, you, Amber, thank you. We, we, love, you. we love you. We love oh, you. Yes, we love you. Thank you. Thank you so much.